everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now you probably can't see me that well, I am in um, like a black top and some purple dungarees but I don't actually think you can see that well but when I put the main light on it gives that horrible like orangey glow that looks really crap for filming. Um, so I just thought I would do a quick check-in with you guys because I haven't actually spoken to you in I think about a month. I haven't done a video. Um, so life has just been like crazy hectic here. Um, I have started a new module for my masters and the assessment is due the first week of December. So I am slowly catching up on, on uni work. This particular assessment isn't quite hopefully as horrible sounding as the last one. So I'm not feeling quite as stressed out. There is still um, about a month to go now till the deadline. So this is kind of where I need to kick into the next gear. Um, but I'm confident that my understanding is there somewhat. Um, I just need to do some research for it. So um, I've just been working and... Um, just life has been quite busy. I think there's been a lot going on and I haven't really settled. I haven't really been reading a lot recently uh, with starting my uni work again, that always kind of happens. Um, I get to a period where I can keep it up for a while and then it kind of falls by the wayside. So at the minute I've finally picked up again um, the book that I'm currently reading, which is The Secret History by Donna Tart. Um, I picked it up because I thought I wanted to pick a book up that would be really compulsive because really the main bulk of my reading over the last few months really was from the booktube prize reading and then when that stopped um, it usually gives me an interlude to read what I want but this is the first year of that interlude ending but me still studying for my masters so essentially that break isn't quite as exciting as it used to be um, because in between that I'm studying because I am doing my master's January to January so the, after this last module that will be my first year done but I know for a lot of people they study September to September um, so my chronology is a little bit off um, and that's why it it didn't really allow me that much time to read the when we finished. Um, so really the run up to Christmas might be a little bit easier because once I hand the assessment in on the 10th or 9th of December I have the full run up to Christmas just to read, uh, which I'm hoping to do a lot of. I've just been quite stressed with a lot of other external things, uni work being one of them. A lot of extra stresses at the moment with kind of personal things that I can't really kind of explain on the channel. Um, I've got some, some issues, a lot of extra external stress at the moment in my immediate environment. Um, and I've been trying um, to go on a few dates here and there um, with no real uh, progress at the moment. So if anybody in the comments wants to hear any marginal updates on that, um, if I have anything to tell, I, I can tell you guys, not that you'd be particularly interested. Um, so yeah, I've kind of spent a lot of my free time um going on dates or, or meeting people or trying to to do social things um so that and on top of the uni work i kind of have been really bad with reading so anyway tangent over um so i put down the secret history for a while when i started doing the module again um because i kind of get really bad guilt when i should be studying um but i picked it back up um one or two days ago and I'm now nearly 100 pages in, really enjoying it. Um, I think the setup is really interesting. I have a lot of thoughts buzzing about that book at the moment, but I really think I should talk about it with you guys when I finished it because um, it's it's so early on in the story and um, I want to really see where Donna Tart's going to take this plot. I have utter trust and faith in her. I know so many people love this book and after about two or three pages, the prologue and the first kind of page, I fully trusted that I will absolutely love this book. I'm predicting it's going to be a five star read. Um, 
I've never read anything quite like it. The sheer intelligence level of the author is baffling. Um, the way she talks about um, Greek mythology and um, the funny little way she describes things, her intelligence is just out of this world. So um, she's very, very, very impressive. Um, the things that she writes, the characters that she's created, and I have full trust in where she's going to take us. So I'm quite enjoying the ride with that one. But I decided today as a pick me up to go to the library because I haven't been in so long. I got to the point where I'd maxed out the reservations for the books that I currently had. I had read them all, um, but I'd obviously forgot to renew them the other day. So I got a message that I had a one pound fine because I'd gone over by a day, the renewal. Um, so today I thought I'll go and drop them off because I read all of them um, and I'll take some more out. So I thought I would do a little book haul for you. So there's seven books that I've taken out of the library. So the first one I've taken out is Cabin Fever by Alex Dahl. Now, I can't remember because I've recently been binging a lot of booktube. While I write uni notes up, I tend to binge a lot of booktube because it's really... Uh, cathartic for me it's really relaxing um and when I have a really stressful day um at work which tends to be more often than not because I have a very phone heavy based job and um, which deals with a lot of of people with a lot of um frustration shall we say um I watch a lot of YouTube because I find people's voices and talking about books really calms me down and someone mentioned this book, so I've been watching loads of kind of spooky October, November booktube style videos. And someone recently, maybe it was a few months ago, I don't know if it was Jen Campbell or it might have been April from Getting Hooger with it. I, I, don't quote me on that, I don't really have any cognitive recollection of where it came from, but someone mentioned this book. Now I recognised the author because when I go on the Borrow Box app, it mentions another one of this author's books, Playdate, I think. Um, so I know that they've written quite a few thrillers, but this one appeals to me because it's kind of set in a Nordic setting and it deals with a therapist getting involved in this thriller, which to me ticks a lot of my boxes of interest. Um, so it says at the, at the top, as her therapist, you know her darkest secrets, but how does she know yours? So I really like that kind of... Um, a psychological thriller get under your skin and I know it's centered around a creepy cabin so I, I found this was really interesting and exciting and I can't remember whoever mentioned it said it was just so gripping so it says Christina is a successful therapist in central Oslo she spends her days helping clients navigate their lives with a cool professionalism that has got her to the top but when her client Leah arrives at her office clearly distressed, begging Christina to come to her remote cabin in the woods, she feels the balance she's worked hard to achieve begins to slip. When Leah fails to turn up to her next two sessions, Christina reluctantly heads out into the wilderness to find her. Alone and isolated, surrounded by snow and trees, Christina soon realises that she has made a huge mistake. So it sounds so creepy. So I'm so into the idea of reading um, thrillers, horror um creepy reads at the moment i've really never been a horror reader but i've been watching a lot of booktube at the moment Jordaline, um april from getting hygge with it um and a few others i've slowly started to get more into the uh, noel gallagher um the booktubers who like horror and thriller and I love psychological thrillers so much so I think I'm going to try and make the effort with my reading in the next few months while it's still wintry and dark and a little bit creepy to bridge over and horror and see how I like it because a lot of the books I'm so excited to read at the moment are actually classed as horror um so I'm thinking maybe I can tap into that genre so this kind of feels very um thriller like but more on the creepy side because I do have some NetGalley approved reads that I haven't got around to reading either. Um, and some of them have been really buzzed about recently. For example, Stephen Graham Jones's My Heart is a Chainsaw has been mentioned lots. The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix has been mentioned a lot. And those are books that I have NetGalley proofs of. So I'm really excited to read them. So it's kind of got me 
thinking about trying to read those kind of books and hopefully they might be great um, propulsive and compelling reads to kind of get me back into reading. And they're also very of this time of year. So another one that I picked up was Nikki French's The House of Correction. So I've currently only read the first in the Frida Klein series, which was Blue Monday. I have all the other books in the collection on one of my book trolleys, um, but I haven't got around to reading it. And I think a, a series is a bit more of a commitment um, when you've got so much other stuff going on and there's so many other books to read. I am a terrible person because I go to the library, take all these books out when I've got loads of physical books in this house that I really want to read and a lot of galleys and ebooks that I buy for 99p from Amazon. So I have a crazy big TBR um, and I still get overexcited and take things out of the library. But that that is just a book lover's problem to have. Um, so yeah, I picked this up because I've always wanted to read more Nikki French because Jen, um, Jen Campbell, um, she raves about Nikki French and I think she's pretty much read every Nikki French book that is out there. So Nikki French is a pseudonym for a couple that write thrillers. Um, so like I said, I haven't really got around to free, free decline series yet, but I will do. Highly raved about series, but they do a lot of standalones. This is one of the more recent standalones. So when I went into the library, they had this in the lying room, but this one appeals to me slightly more. So if I enjoy this, I will go back and read more standalones by these authors or this author. That is two people. Um, so I think this starts with the idea that a body is found in a shed and it's the person that she's sleeping with. I can't remember. It's it, Tabitha. It says um, Stuart Reese's body is found in her garden shed. I can't remember whether it's an affair or it's just a guy she's been sleeping with. Um, but she turns up and finds his body and everybody believes it's her that's done it. So she kind of is awaiting trial and she's the only one that can kind of prove that she hasn't done it. So we have to kind of go on this journey with the character to find out who actually killed him and why um, she's being framed for it. So it sounds really, really interesting. Um, it, it does look kind of chunky. It's about 500 pages, which put me off a little bit. But, but then when I picked the line room up, that was only 400 nods. So they were very similar, both chunky. But the font is quite big. And if they are as good of a writer as I've heard, then this will be a really quick read. I mean, the writing was really good in Blue Monday and that's not a kind of recent release, whereas this is much more recent. So I'm expecting good things. And then the next one I took out was Nothing Can Hurt You by Nicola May Goldberg. Um, this was buzzed about a while ago. It got kind of mixed reviews. But I've really struggled to find this um, anywhere else. When you go on Amazon, it's still quite expensive as an ebook, um, and I couldn't find it on any of the online library services. So when I saw it today, I thought I have to take it out, otherwise you'll forget about this book because it's been on my radar for a while. So I think this is another kind of thriller. It says, on a cold day in 1997, student Sarah Morgan was killed in the woods surrounding her liberal arts college in upstate New York. Her boyfriend, Blake Campbell, confessed his plea of temporary insanity, raising more questions than it answered. So I think this is really interesting. I remember how strikingly beautiful the cover is, kind of that street and looking in at the house and the, and it has the purple sky above. Um, it sounds exactly like something that I would really like. Um, a kind of thriller, trying to find out what happened. Um, why did her boyfriend confess, especially when it says later on in the synopsis that in the aftermath of his acquittal, um, the case seems to haunt a, um, a strange and surprising network of people. So it sounds very much my kind of thing, but I know it did get some mixed reviews when it came out, but it kind of seems to suggest it will tap into that kind of love I have for um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark and true crime and things like that because it does say, it does mention here as well its connection to a, a local serial killer and 
trying to find out what happened. Um, so really excited for this one. Then I also picked up Tall Bones by Anna Bailey. Now this again is really similar to the last book. This has been on my radar for a while. This was around on NetGalley. Um, and it wasn't one I ended up requesting. But when I read the synopsis when I was in the library, it kind of again seems to be in that same vein of thriller, creepy, mystery which I'm really in the mood for at the moment. So it says, when 17-year-old Emma leaves her best friend Abigail at a party in the woods, she believes that their lives are just beginning. Many things will happen that night, but Emma will never see her friend again. Abby's disappearance cracks open the facade of the small town of Whistling Ridge, its intimate history of long-held grudges and resentment. Even within Abby's family, there are questions to be asked of Noah, the older brother whom Abby betrayed, of Jude, the shining younger sibling who hides his battle scars, of Dolly, her mother, and Samuel, her father, both in thrall to the fire and brimstone preacher who holds the entire town in his grasp. Then there is Rap, the outsider, whose presence in the town both unsettles and excites those around him. So it sounds really creepy and dark and like there's a, a secret and a mystery to the actual town itself, which seems really compelling to me. I think in some ways this seems a bit similar in the way that the cover is pitched to Pew uh, by Catherine, I can't remember her name, because um, that's kind of an outsider coming into the town and ruffling things up a bit and obviously it mentioned there Rat is an outsider, um, but I think Pew's a lot more understated, I don't know, I haven't read this, maybe it's similar, um, but this sounds really intriguing, I love when locations have secrets and we find out internally what's going on and how we have a facade on the outside and lots of other stuff going on in the inside um there's a lot of books in the last decade i'd say that would that came out with that kind of theme um so lessonings um little fires everywhere um a lot of leanne moriarty books kind of focus around this perfect place but things are different inside of it um, but this seems like it's going to have a creepier edge as well, which I'm really here for. And then the next couple of books are kind of authors that I really want to try. i um, heard great things about, so I've picked what I class as my safe, more safe bets with these authors. So the next one I have is Witch Elm by Tana French. Now, I can't remember which booktuber mentioned this book the other day. It might have been, it might have been April or Mara from Books Like Whoa, I can't remember, but someone has basically said this is their favourite, um, now favourite thriller. Um, so I've read The Searcher by Tana French um, and enjoyed it but didn't love it. Um, but I know that it hasn't had as many rave reviews, that particular book, which is a more recent one than this one, uh, than this one. And there is a series, the Dublin Murder series, which I really would like to read. But standalones are a little bit easier at the moment to tackle than that series, which I know has got really chunky books in it. Also, I didn't see that series in the library. Um, but because recently someone said this has now become one of their new favourite books and I saw it there. I thought maybe this is a great place to start because people rave about Tana French and I would like to read all of her work as well. So I think this is a great place to start. So it says, One night changes everything for Toby Hennessy. A brutal attack leaves him damaged and traumatised, unsure even at the person he used to be. He seeks refuge at his family's ancestral home, the Ivy House, filled with memories of wild strawberry summers and teenage parties with his cousins. But not long after to Toby's arrival... A discovery is made, a skull tucked neatly inside the old witch elm in the garden. As detectives begin to close in, Toby is forced to examine everything he thought he knew about his family, his past and his self. <laughs> so sounds really interesting. I have a lot of faith and trust in the booktubers that I watch a lot of. Um, and nobody has bad things to say about this author, so I'm really excited to try this and see. If I do like this, I will definitely read um, the Dublin Murder series because I feel like that gets even more rave reviews than this. Um, but standalones are safe, right? And then the next one I've got is Billy Summer by Stephen King. So I've never read any Stephen King 
at all been terrified for a very long time to start with any Stephen King um, because I know he is essentially the king of horror, horror fiction. Um, I know he also does a bit of supernatural surrealism in his books. He also does merge into the sci-fi genre a little bit. Um, and I know some books are safer than others I've come to establish over the years to start with. So I nearly took out The Green Mile because I love that film so much. So I knew that I know the content of that book, essentially, and that's a bit safer for me. But then I picked up Billy Summers instead. So this is a really recent Stephen King. And this is about a, an assassin. Um, Billy Summers is a killer for hire. He's among the best snipers in the world. A decorated Iraq, Iraq war vet who can blend into any neighbourhood and vanish like Houdini after the shot is taken. But he will only agree to the contract if the target is a truly bad guy. And now Billy wants out, but first he's offered one final job, an offer which is just too big to refuse. So this seems like quite safe for me because it's more thriller, uh, I think, than necessarily direct horror. If I like it though, I will tentatively merge into um, more Stephen King works because I'm fascinated by him. My dad has been reading a lot of his books um, over the last year or so. He read The Stand and other, The Institute and some other ones and he really likes him. But my dad tends to have a quirkier uh, taste level than me. Um, we have a lot of overlap, um, but he definitely likes dark uh, sci-fi, quirky, strange, which is very Stephen King. Um, so I'm fascinated to find out what I think about him because so many people do love him. And there are some series of books with Stephen King. Let's see if I can find on Instagram what it is called. Yeah, so Hodder Books, I've been doing new collections of his work, new editions. I don't know if this is one of them actually, to be honest. Um, but I'm, I can't exactly remember, but they've, they've done some beautiful editions of Stephen King books, um, some of his horror, um, and kind of grouped them into different collections. So they have novellas, um, some of his time travel, um, his horror ones, they're all kind of subtitled. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to click on the Instagram to see if it... It will show me anything. Um, editions of Shawshank Redemption, 1922, um, The Body. Anyway, but they recently did a really new edition of Misery that was beautiful. And I'm kind of, Misery's the next one that's more definitely in the horror genre that I would like to try. Maybe Misery and Carrie. Um, because I kind of am getting a bit of a fascination with whether I'd enjoy those kind of books. I know they're definitely horror, um, but I'm tentatively getting more excited to try those kind of books out. So we shall see. I will report back to you on how I found The More Tamer King. And I would love to know in the comment section down below where I should start with King, because I would like to really give him a go and his horror a go and stop being such a scaredy cat. So I'd love your help with that. And then the last book that I picked up um, was 56 Days by Catherine Ryan Howard. I haven't managed to read any Catherine Ryan Howard before. I tried to get this from NetGalley, but it was just too hyped. So I was rejected for this one. Um, but I know she's done The Nothing Man and Rewind, which both got amazing, amazing reviews. This book actually has had a bit of mixed reviews since I've seen reviewers review it. But it is a pandemic book. So this is set during the COVID pandemic, two people meet and then they have to rush their relationship along and lock down together. Um, but when they come out of lockdown, one of them has killed the other and we have to figure out what happened. So I found that premise really compelling since I knew about it and since people have been talking about it. So I can't wait to read this one and let you guys know um, because again, this is another author that I want to read a lot of their works of. And if I enjoy this, I will go back and read Rewind and The Nothing Man because The Nothing Man seems to be her most acclaimed and popular work. So that's everything. I'm going to wrap this up now because there's barely any light. I'm just like essentially ahead now on this video. Um, 
But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Bye now.